Oh my goodness. Listen to it. This is a mod the BeamNG community has been waiting for for a very long time. It's the Gavril Scout by Lucas BE. This is a European style compact van. Now this mod has just been released on Gumroad. It's going to cost three euros 80, which is about four dollars. I'm going to be reviewing it and telling you whether I think it's worth paying for. There will be a demo that's coming out soon on the repo. That'll be free for you to check out and try it out before you commit to a purchase. So let's have a look inside the rig. It's a big, big load space. It looks great. You could definitely fit a lot of stuff in there and all of the panels and stuff are openable and closed nicely. There you go. Bang. Oh, hang on. Ah, I think you have to close. Open the other side. Ah, there you go. Bang and bang. That's really cool. Now, has it got a sliding door? Yes, it has. Boom. I love sliding doors. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the interior doors also work. So, let's have a look at this interior. It looks really nice. We have a massive kind of tablet-style infotainment system there. We've got nice lighting down here with the uh, climate control and the shifter, of course, moves. That's really, really nice. Let's open the bonnet. I believe this has the 1.4 or 1.6 litre petrol engine. There you go. They're kind of engines you'd expect from the Cherrier. Let's close that back up. Now, this is called a Gavril Scout, not a Volkswagen style name, which is what this car is based on. It's based on the VW Caddy, which is a van that Volkswagen make. Now, Lucas B.E. said that they called it a Gavril because it gives them more scope to kind of work with it. They can create more variations of configs. It's a more generic name, and that's fine. I think even though, in my mind, it's a Volkswagen, it being a Gavril is not such a bad thing. So, how does it handle? Well, it is a big van, but it's kind of a car-derived van, so it's actually okay. Like, the front of this is basically a golf sort of... Whoa! Okay, we've got the traction control cut again, which is kind of interesting. Let's turn that off and see what happens. Right. Not very powerful. Let's get the... Oh, nice lights on the dashboard there. We've got a digital display with a trip meter that actually works. That's great. We're driving around Italy today. I think that'd be a cool place to test this thing. Here we go. Into a handbrake. Oh my goodness! Hey, it's a good handbrake though. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that that shifter sounds great, and the noise from the shifter too is great. Okay, let's go for a crash test. I'm going to do about a 60 mile per hour crash test into a tree, and we're going to see how it performs. So Lucas B claims this has got a dev level crash physics model. Let's have a look when we crash into this tree. Bang. Oh my goodness. Well, there's no passenger cabin deformation. That's pretty good. That looks great. Oh my goodness. Let's try that again, but this time into a building a little bit slower. Oh, and all the bits fly off. That is really, really nice. I love it. So Lucas B.E.'s last mod was the Cherrier Picnic. That was an awesome little French hot hatchback, and it was also a paid mod. But with Lucas B.E.'s mod, you, get, you do get a lot of configs. This mod has 32 different configurations with seven sets of wheels and two engines. So let's try the fleet version of the most basic engine. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing frivolous about this. Look at these. We haven't even got alloys or hubcaps in the back. Yep, very, very standard. But look at that interior. We still got the big tablet in here. That's really cool. Now there's a cargo delivery van, DPS. Let's have a quick look. The new delivery standard, DPS. That looks really cool. What do we got in there? Any packages? Oh, we do. We've got packages. That's really cool. Okay, let's drive these packages around Castelletto, this hilltop castle town. I have to say it's perfect for these city streets. It's really, really near. Whoa, really nimble for a little van. And the engine actually has quite a bit of grunt. I think this might be the diesel, which is definitely more suited to this van. Oh, the turning circle is OK. Not amazing. Handbrake. Yeah. Oh, this would be perfect for a little getaway, wouldn't it? A getaway van. That'd be awesome. OK, we're now going on to this switchback road, which should be good at testing the handling of this thing. I've turned off the traction control completely. Oh, it's good. It does drive more like a car than you'd expect for a van. Wow. Oh, it's really nimble. That is so cool. This isn't even the most powerful variant, I don't think. But yeah, it's going great. There's also this road assistance van. It has a light bar on the top. That's really cool. Oh, go. There you go. So two litre diesel engine with the diesels. It's pretty good. Um, this reminds me kind of an RAC van you see in the UK. We have a company called RAC. They're basically roadside assistance. Breakdown cover people. 
Oh yeah. Feels exactly the same. They're all quite plush inside. I don't know if any of these have leather seats. I'm sure we'll find out as we progress through the configs. Whoa! Losing control. No, the direction control. Completely handle it. So now we're down at the airport with the multiway, and this is a little people carrier. So if we open up the back there, you can see the seats. There are three seats there, two seats there, and how many in the back? Oh. There's none in the back. That does surprise me, but you can get a lot of cargo in there. So let's imagine we've just picked some people up from the airport and we're going to do a high speed run on the motorway. Before we get started though, look at this. This is the gear selector. It's like a little twist knob. That is really cool. Why isn't there something like this in the base game? Come on. Seriously, I think mod developers are better than the actual game developers at this point. So this little petrol engine is actually pretty fruity. Listen to it. It sounds kind of cool. To have this in a van, well, it's powerful enough. Let's see what it's like uh, with like top speed performance. Whoa! Okay, so we're in sport mode if a van can actually have a sport mode. Are the gear changes a bit quicker? Uh, not really. I don't think this really has a sport mode. But uh, 0-60 is 14.9 seconds and the top speed is 95. So what will it feel like at 95? Wow, we are revving the nuts off this thing. Almost six and a half thousand RPM, 92 miles per hour, it's just changed up. Oh my goodness, have we got flabby paddles in this thing? I, we can't have, surely not. Oh, we can have, oh, let's do a crash test. Whoa! Oh my goodness, what is that hanging through the car? Is that the engine? The engine's in the passenger seat. Okay, let's have a look at the outside. Oh, it's actually held up pretty well. The passenger cabin is totally fine. Can we open the doors? No. Open, please. Okay, let's roll it over, see if they'll open when we've rolled it back. There we go. Door. Yay! They actually work. That's really cool. And there's a door on this side too. Amazing. So there's also this diesel version of the multiway. This does not 60 in just under 10 seconds and has a top speed of about 110. So it's definitely the preferred choice for taxi drivers. Okay, so let's have a look further down the config list. We've got the Cargo 220i. This, I think, has got a slightly more powerful petrol engine. Yeah, look. 10.5 seconds and the cargo 300d so an even more powerful diesel engine not 68 seconds oh my goodness let's try this thing out okay onto the road here we go tiny bit of wheel spin there and oh this thing's quick not 60 in eight seconds that's ridiculous for a van even with a powerful engine that's ridiculous oh look back there i love looking backwards you, you've got this kind of grill whoa grill mesh that separates the uh, driver's cabin. That's to prevent things kind of flying forward and hitting you in the back of the head. But in a big crash, that stuff in the back will break through. And unfortunately, a lot of injuries in vans do seem to be rear injuries where they're squashed by the massive weight that's in the cargo space. This thing, okay, this thing handles really weird, weirdly with all this power. It's kind of wheel spinny, torque steery, but uh, yeah, a fun driving experience. Look, there's even a high-end cargo model. This has all-wheel drive. How much more power? Well, it's got 160, so about 15 brake horsepower more than the car we just tried out. Does it have launch control? Uh, no. It doesn't. Let's go. Here we go. Whoa. That is quick. That is seriously quick for a van. I don't know how many sporty variants of vans there are in real life. Um, I know that Volkswagen have made sporty versions of their Transporter in the past. I don't think they make a sporty version of the Caddy. But yeah, whoa. If you really wanted to get stuff around quickly, you'd need a big, fast estate car, wouldn't you? But uh, this has so much more room than an estate car. So traction control is off, and it really does feel eager to put that power down. There's very little wheel spin. It seems, it seems much more planted. The all-wheel drive is really working its magic on this heavy, heavy vehicle. I am, of course, using my Logitech G27 and Track IR. That helps me look around. Oh, dear. Oh, what is that bright light there? Is that... Is that... What? Hang on a minute. Is that from the glass smashing? It's created this like, really bright light from that. That is really weird. I've never seen that before. Okay, let's have a go with the multi-way polizia. What the Italian police used to catch a de mafia. <laughs> That is really funny. Okay, so the police have a manual. Look, can we, we can't put it into sport mode, but we can turn that off. That's okay. And let's listen to that Italian siren. Oh, yes. Right. We're going to try and catch some crims. Brookle the ground is fleeing you. There they are. Right. Go, go, go. He's crashed. Go. Oh, wheel spin. Go. Come on, police van. You can catch the Brookle the ground. So that doesn't seem like a very powerful vehicle. We should be able to catch up. And I think they're damaged. 
What is that up there? Is that the um, radar stuff or is they, are they lights? Are there lights in the windows? Oh, sorry. Keep going, keep going, keep going. We're okay, we're okay. Oh, I can't see. So I'm currently having to look under the bonnet. Whoa! Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, yeah, he's still getting away. And my car is really wrecked. Why do I keep saying car? It's a van. It's a van. We're doing okay. Was that him? I, I have no idea where he's gone. Right, I'm going to have to reset. Okay, we've got a new van. Uh, it looks like the Brook on the Ground has just had a massive accident. Yep. Look at him up here. Oh, look. There's a... Uh, whoa, there's a Gavril Scout in traffic. Oh! Oh, how did he... I thought he was going to get head on there. Right. Let's pit him into the trees. You go and boom. Nope, missed him. Didn't get into the trees. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh no. Watch out. Go into the trees. Yes. Have we got him? No, he's still going. Oh, we're wrecked. No, go. Oh, he's got away. We've got different versions of the multiway down here. And these are the high end models. Now they've got to have... Uh, leather seats in there, surely. Well, here it is, the multi-way. Let's open up the back. I don't know why there aren't two rear seats back here. Maybe you can fit them. Are they leather seats? No, they're not. That's weird. Whoa, watch out, man. That was really close. The interior looks fairly similar as well, but it is a more powerful engine, so... Oh, are we automatic? We're in automatic. Here we go. Right, so this thing is the most powerful, or one of the most powerful diesel engines you can get, and it's a high-spec luxury model. It feels pretty similar to the others. What? That's a lot of... Whoa! I don't know what that was. That was like both understeer and oversteer in equal measure. But yeah, that's kind of cool. Look at the roof. There's a lot of headroom in here. Oh, I've left the... I've created a rear wing by leaving the uh, the rear open. Whoops. And just two more models. The Scout Tracer uh, 330DX. All-terrain model with four-cylinder diesel engine, lifted suspension, and all-wheel drive. Yay, 160 brake horsepower. So yeah, it's slightly lifted, and it's got all-wheel drive. It even has an off-road mode with the traction control. That's great. So, let's put it to the test. Is it good off-road? We're going over this little bridge. Feels pretty good so far. Oh, it's not changing up. Oh, we have to manually change up the gears with the manual mode on sequential. That's kind of cool. Whoa, watch out, everybody. Oh, my goodness. It feels okay. It's certainly not a rally car. Um, the suspension is... Oh, for goodness sake. I was about to say, the suspension kind of deals with the bumps pretty well. Um, let's see if it goes around here. Okay, here we go. Use the handbrake to our advantage. That black sherry is still in our way. Oh, get out of the way! We need to turn off the AI traffic, don't we? So I am kind of driving this like a rally car, but it does feel good. Not too bad. I don't really know what practical use a off-road van has in, in the real world. I guess people who live in remote places, maybe on construction sites, these would be useful. But yeah, oh, it's not bad. What are the tyres like? Are they quite chunky off-road tyres? Uh, it's hard to tell. Maybe they're a bit more chunky than the standard variant. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Right, big handbrake turn. Can we do it? Come on. Here we go. Oh, whoa. Not too bad. Yeah, like it. So there's one more variant. The Cargo 350 RS. Why on earth does this exist? It's a limited edition model with a retuned four-cylinder petrol engine, sport suspension, and sticky tires. 198 horsepower, six seconds, not to 60, that's crazy, and a top speed of 130. Let's get this thing on the motorway. Okay, here we go. There is quite a lot of torque steer. Again, there's so much power going through these front wheels, it's front wheel drive, that we're getting that torque steer. I think it's more, yeah. Oh my goodness, the, the wheel is completely being, like, Taken from my hands. The torque steer is insane on this. Right, here we go. So we've got a double clutch transmission. It's pretty good. There is 90. We've already beaten the previous record we got on the motorway in the van. 100. Oh my goodness. Listen to it. It's got a really loud exhaust and those wheels with the Brembo brakes in there. That's kind of cool. Right. 120. Oh yes. Is the engine heating up? No, nope, absolutely fine. Sticking in the middle. Let me go into external view. There you go. Boom. Oh my goodness. I've never seen a van like this. We've even got the racing stripes down here. That's really cool. Here we go. So I think you know what I'm going to do at the end of here. We're going to go across the roundabout. I mean straight through the roundabout. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, inside a tree trunk. Now that is a van crash. Oh my goodness. The doors are flung open. 
Wow, what a wreck. So what do I think? Is the Gavril Scout worth it? Remember, it's about $4. You can get it from Gumroad. Well, Lucas BE has promised that there will be some future updates, including an electric van variant. There will also be some bug fixes. I don't know if I spotted any bugs today, apart from that weird thing with the glass. When it smashed, it was all really bright. Maybe that's intended, I don't really know. But um, they will support this mod in the future. And if the Sherry Picnic, their previous mod, is anything to go by, I think that support will be really, really cool. So, I do recommend this. Maybe wait for the uh, free version of the repo, the kind of demo version, to try that out before you buy anything if you're not 100% sure that you're going to enjoy it. But this is definitely one of the best, if not the best, van mod you can get for BeamNG. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the links from the description. You can find the Gumroad and the forum post on there. And if you want to see my review of the Sherry A Picnic, Lucas B's other mod, click the video on screen right now. I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon for some more Simulator Adventures.